So, so now let's switch gears and see what we mean by job control. So, so the shell where we run our commands, the shell views um, views the commands you give not as processes. The process is an operating system concept. A process is a OS construct. Whereas a, sh a job is a shell construct. So that's as an aside, let's keep that in mind. So when I run a program, let's say I have a sim very simple program and it's just a looper. If I just write a uh, program called loop and uh, what this does is loop.c and all it has in it is an int main and it just does a while loop. That's as simple as it can get. So if I were to build this and at the command prompt, let's say I run loop. Um, and just if I were to run loop and actually I'm gonna put a num, I'm gonna pass it something though he's not set up to receive it. I'm just gonna run loop like that. If I were to run it, then what you will notice is when I run it, the, I don't get the uh, prompt back. So what really is happening then is this process when run, is the operating system the, the shell in order to process this and we saw in another in in another video uh, how a process uh, how the shell creates uh, um, creates a child process and then runs this child process within with, uh, the runs the executable of the command inside this child process so what's really happening in in a shell then is when i run this i the 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 shell will actually create creates a job to run loop, right? Now, you might say, well, how is that different from a process? Well, let's take, let's go one step further. Let's say I ran something like this. If I, let's say ran a command and um, let's say I uh, ran an ls and I piped it to wc. Uh, which means I'm getting a listing and piping it to WC. What the what the operating system actually does is it creates a job, creates a job for this thing, which is the entire string that I typed in, ls pipe WC. This is a job. But this job has two processes in it, with two processes in it. In fact, it runs an ls job, a uh, a ls process a wc process creates a pipe and this one writes to this pipe and this one reads from that pipe and that's what this is all set up by the operating system so on the shell you can actually do something called the jobs this is jobs is actually it happens to be a shell it's a shell uh, command or a shell directive if you will as opposed to when I say something like ls, ls is actually an executable. There is no executable um, called jobs. Jobs is a shell's internal command. It's an internal command, which means um, which means what the, what the shell is doing when you do a jobs is it's actually showing you all the jobs that it has launched and it'll give it to you in some some uh, formatted way, just like ps gives you the let set of processes. So, so for example, uh, right now there's probably no jobs, but but if I if I ran loop like this, if I ran loop like this, right, and if I were to have hit Control Z, which means that I passed it, and if I were to say jobs now, right, if I were to jobs say jobs now, what I will get is it'll say there's one job, and uh, it is stopped because I hit control Z and it'll tell you what the job's description is. It'll say it's a loop, how, how the job was run. It'll tell you that, right? So that's what that's what it jobs does. Now, which means that it is, it is, it's, it's a process that was, it was a job that was launched, but it's currently stopped, right? Now, this is, this is a concept that is specific to 
to the um, the the shell itself. Uh, we also see that are, uh, just because we're, we're on this topic, other shell uh, commands, um, other examples of shell commands are bg and fg or other commands. So for example, if at this point I were to say a bg, what I'm saying is there is a job that has been stopped. I want to run it, but I don't want to put it, I want to run, don't run it in the foreground, I want to run it in the background. So you'll still see after this, if I were to do a jobs again, after this, if I were to run jobs again, I will see that there is a process, but this process is currently running because it is running, but it's running in the background. So it will still say that it, it's a process, right? So that's, that's the idea. Um, uh, so, so uh, as we launch more and more jobs, for example, if I were to run another uh, another job at this point, and I can also run a job. For example, if I'm running an editor, and if I put the editor in the background, now it'll tell me that that this is a process also running, but it's in the background. So it'll tell you one and two when you launch it. It'll tell you that there are two processes. Um, if I were to run jobs now. I will see that it'll say uh, there's one which is this line and also there'll be another one that says Emacs is also a job and it's running in the background also um, in the background also and and there are two jobs currently right so that is a big picture about jobs so 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 what 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 does job control really mean when job control is about about interacting with your jobs just like process control is interacting with processes so what what job control is is to is to do all these job control is to um, to get a get a listing of the jobs to get to put a job in the background in fact i can also say here for example i can say now fg if i were to say fg one of these process, one of these processes which are running in the background is got to, brought into the foreground, and and we'll see uh, which of the two will be brought in, and the and the logic typically in in the shell is bring fg will bring the most recent, it's like a stack, most recent process um, to the foreground. So in other words, Emacs, which was running in the background, um, it now is brought into the foreground. And so we have to understand what, what it means to run a process in the foreground versus background. So here's, here's a quick uh, picture to kind of, oops. Uh, here's a good quick picture to get a sense of jobs and then we'll look at how job control uh, works in some more detail. So here's a quick picture for us. So again, the shell can run jobs and it can run jobs in the foreground or the background. There's, here in this example, there are two jobs that are in the background and one job which is in the foreground. The point of a foreground job is simply that the shell is running something and it's not, it's not ready to receive other process, other commands because when I run, for example, and we'll see, we'll be more specific on foreground versus background in just a second. If I simply run the loop, like loop program like this, let's say I ran like this, then what you will see is I will not get the, 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 the prompt will not come back because this is, this loop program is in the, is running in the foreground, which, which means that I'm waiting for it to finish which puts it in the foreground. So the, the way to put something in the background, there are only two ways to put something in the background. It was either launched using an ampersand at the end, the ampersand puts it in the background, or it was, or it was launched and then, and control Z, like you stopped it, and you probably put it in the background after that. Those are the only ways a process goes in the background. Now, there is an intermediate thing here where you can hit a control Z and you are, so there are processes that are, can be running in the background or stopped in the background. So they're both subtle and that's what we saw the distinction. When you hit control Z, it only, it is in the background, but it's stopped. 
but if you put it in bg then it is is running in the background and we'll the idea of running and uh, and stop should be clear to you from understanding the processes life cycle which is a, a running process is cont a, a running process is contending for the processor so it could be ready or running whereas a stop process is suspended and is put in a wait state and it only comes out of the state when the event that it's waiting for occurs in this case the bg all, all that the bg really does is it sends the bg what it does is the 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 shell will send it send the processor sig continue which says okay you were stopped and you're sitting in the background and stopped now i want you to continue running but you still run run in the background so that's what the idea of a bg is so let's let's um, understand um, something about uh, let's pin our definitions of uh, of of foreground and background so in essence so in a nutshell uh, foreground versus background um, and I like to think of foreground and background as they apply to jobs people say foreground process and background process it's really jobs that are in the foreground and background because it's the this notion of putting something in the foreground or background is a shell thing there is also a way to do things about processes but the term should really be applied to jobs so um, we say a job is a job is said to be a job is in foreground if the shell which launched it is waiting on it so if the if the shell is waiting on it and it's usually waiting for it to waiting for it to either terminate or stop right Whatever that is, if you're waiting on it, then it's said to be in the foreground. Um, which means that, which means that uh, the shell, from the shell standpoint, you're not gonna get the command from back. That is the key key thing to remember. Uh, job is said to be in is in background if the shell. is not waiting on it that seems like a pretty straightforward answer but we have to kind of um, uh, like hash out some of the details here so so if a if if a job is in the background um, then right, we said the shell is not waiting for it but here in we need to worry about a, a few more details which is when a foreground process and a, or a background process is is when the shell is not waiting for it, what really is happening behind the scenes? Well, uh, when the shell is is waiting on it, one of the important things that will happen is the the foreground process is is in control of the terminal so let's understand what that means for us that is a, that is a key step in being in the foreground that is the fact that you didn't get the shell prompt back means that that process is controlling the terminal the process that is in the foreground is controlling the terminal um, and in order to understand what controlling terminal is let's just and let's let's uh, let's ask ourselves um, if you have a shell that has launched, this is a shell prompt. If the shell has launched, let's say, to the example that we saw earlier, let's just get that uh, picture back here. Let's say the shell has launched three programs as of now, right? So it has it has launched three programs. Let's say this is program A, the program B, and program C. It has launched three programs. B and C are in the background. A is in the foreground. Right? So 
So now the question is, if let's say A were to write something out to the screen, if A prints something out and B and C, uh, sorry, B prints something out and C prints something out, where do those show up? Like, for example, if they're both running right now, right? And I ran A like this. And while A was running, and it, let's say A takes a long time to run. Now, if either of these guys prints, like if this, this one prints, if this one prints a high, and this one prints a buy, I'll see high and buy on the screen here. In fact, if they didn't have a new line, they'd be mixed up also, it's, which is an expected behavior. Right. And in, in fact, if in addition to those, if this guy were to have were to print something else, if he prints something else, like if he prints an X, Y, Z, you'll see the X, Y, Z also. And they might be in some order. It doesn't matter. So so printing, which is writing to when when I say print, what I mean is I'm writing to the standard out. And the reason why this is happening is the, when the shell created all these child uh, processes and the, and the, these jobs, all of them have inherited the same standard out. They've inherited their standard out from the shell. So std out is uh, is inherited from the shell. Now the default is actually std in is also inherited from the so is std in but the problem with the std in being inherited is if if either of these guys were to do a read if this one did a, a read yes if either of these processes were to do a read operation just a second if either of them were to do a read, then they're all reading from the STD in. The question is, who gets it? Now, the answer should really be pretty obvious to it. Who gets it is, is only going to be a well-defined answer. The answer should be A gets it, right? But you, A gets it. But the problem is all of them are sharing the STD in. How do you make sure that only A gets it and not the others? And the way that it's done is through a notion of two, two notions. One is called the terminal control and the other is a process group. So these two, these two concepts together will make sure that A gets it and not, and not any of the other processes that are in the background. Okay. So, so in a nutshell, what the what the what the shell will really do is when it launches these guys it actually creates and i'll i'll give you the essence of it and then i'll go into the details the uh, the, the what the shell really does is it creates when it launches these it creates three process groups i'll call this pg1 PG two and PG three, and it'll make sure that PG one is currently holding control of the terminal, terminal control. It has the terminal control. Now, if for some reason I switch from, from process A, I put process A in the background and move to process B in the foreground, then process B is the one that's gonna hold the terminal control. So in other words, PG, this is holding the terminal control because it is the process that is in the foreground. Whichever foreground process is, it's the one that holds the terminal control. Okay. So I've introduced this word process group. Um, and the idea of process group should be obvious to you here in this picture that I just drew. Um, every, every process belongs to one and only one process group. So let's get there. So 
let's first understand what process groups are so come some important points every process belongs to exactly one process group and actually the default so on process creation a child inherits the parents process group I'm just gonna call this so in the literature in the in Unix you'll see the words P G I D and P G R P used for referring to the process group just like the just like we have P I D being used to refer to a process and the, all this is this is also a 32-bit number both are 32-bit numbers um, these are just two words that are used depending upon which version of Unix you're using um, there is a tendency to use either of these words P G I D or P group so every process on creation by default inherits the parents process group but a process can change its process group and it does that through a function called set pg id and in fact you can get let's just list a couple of things here uh, you can get your process group um, by simply running the get p group will actually give you the, your process group if you want to know who you what your process group is you can just do an get p group and it'll give you an integer re returning your process group but you can change your process group anytime you want by running this routine with two inputs the input one and an input two and i'm gonna write this this way because it's confusing the way um, the way the man page calls them PID and PGID. I'm just going to call this input one and input two. And the input one is it, it denotes the PID, and we'll see what that means. And input two denotes the PGID. So it can do this. Now this this call is very some somehow misunderstood a lot of times. So let me just uh, make make it clear as to what the scenarios are. Uh, so the cases that we these are all the cases to consider. If in one comma in two are non-zero, so they're not equal to zero. Uh, if they're not equal to zero, then in one is the PID. So then what we're saying is uh, set the process group of uh, process whose PID is in one input one to the value in two. That is, in other words, if you're moving, uh, you're changing the process group into that. So, but that doesn't tell you how it gets created. We also need to talk about creation, and we'll get to that in just a second. Now, if you, if let's say in one is equal to zero and in two is not equal to zero then what we will do is we will uh, we will simply use uh, in then in one is assumed to be the PID of the caller calling process whichever process is executing this protein now there's a third possibility which is if in one is is not equal to zero but in two is equal to zero if this were to happen then this is create it says create oops create a new process group with 
PG ID equal to whatever the input one is. So if you're using input one in two ways, that's why I don't want to call it PG ID. If it PG ID equal to in two, sorry, in one, because that's non zero and and add the process with PID e equal to in one to the group. In other words, we just created a group with only one member in it and the one member in it is the, is the caller that the the one which invoked it with and the in one is that. And so the last one is if both are equal to zero, if both in one and in two are equal to zero, then if both are equal to zero, then we are gonna simply do what we did here. The same thing as this, we create a new process group and it will have the one member in it will be the caller of that. So anytime in one is equal to zero, it implies a caller. So if this is this happens, which is actually the most common thing we do, which is set PG ID with a value, call it with zero, zero. If you call it with zero, zero, this is the most common. What we're doing again is we create a new process group with PG ID equals the callers PID and add the caller to this group. So why this is important to understand is, is really this, that if you understand what a shell does, when a shell Take something like this, where let's say I have, let's take the example of LS pipe to WC. What the shell is really doing is, I we said that it, it, it creates an LS and creates a WC and puts a pipe between them and this guy writes to that and that guy reads from it. This is LS but WC. But what is really happening more than that is that it also creates a process group. So typically what, what the shell does is, let's say this, this guy's PID is, this guy's PID, let's say is 32 and this is 45. So what the process, what the shell really does is it creates a process group with PGID equals, actually it creates a process group with PGID equals 32 and both of these guys belong to that process group. So the first one, when when the for, when when the when the shell creates this first one before he does an exec so he, after he does a fork and before he does an exec of the first child this is the left child if you will the first child before he does that he will do a set set pg id 00, zero which means that he's by, by doing this, he will have created a process group, a new process group, and he would have added just this to the process group at this point, right? So at some point later, if he were to do another fork exec, so he'll do another fork and exec. This is for the right child. And what the, when he does that, what he will do is a set PG, PGID before he goes in, he does a set PGID. And let's say uh, when I did this fork, uh, this is the CPID I got here. Let's call this the left child's PID. So what he does then is he does a left, he does zero, which is the caller, and he does a left child PID. By the way, left child PID for us is 32 because that's what that's what the um, the PID of the first guy is. So the PGID is that. So now when he creates a second child, this act of executing this second command, which is this one, 
will make sure that this guy is also part of the group. So now this group is distinct from the shell. The shell is shell is his own process group, but he created this this batch, if you will, or a pipeline, if you will, that belongs to the process group 32. And now he can control everything about this process group. In fact, the the, the one of the things that happens when we do a if we if we, if we perform this and hoping that it didn't run, if I were to hit a let's say a control Z at this point. What the control Z really does is it sends a signal, sends a SIG T S T P to, and this is not the shell doing it. This is this is this is the way the operating system works because the SIG T stop, the control Z is always sent to the process that's controlling the terminal because it sends a SIG T stop to the to the job controlling the terminal in fact i would say the group process group controlling the terminal so so what the shell has done is not only did all this but it also shell hands over the control of terminal to this process group and it does that and this is where it's, it's, it, it is interesting because this this last step which is this is done by the process so because we are we have this process in the foreground Because we have this process in the foreground, what the what the shell also will do is, uh, he, before he doesn't wait for this, he's gonna execute a function and we'll see what that function is in just a second. It's a function that hands control over. So that function is called a TC set P group. So another TC stands for terminal control. It's saying the terminal control is being handed over or and the terminal control for us is who this is this it has two inputs one is called the stack which is whichever whatever the control is in our case that's standard in and who i'm giving the control to and i say lcpid if i do this then i've handed control over to this group and this group is controlling the terminal and i'm waiting and this wait is is done by the shell without actually owning the control of the terminal. So when I hit a control Z, it's not going to the shell anymore, it's going to this process group. And so when I when I when a signal is sent to a process group, right, sends a six star to the job controlling the terminal, which means that both of these are gonna get this six star. So the entire, not only does the, the, this this uh, sig, this act of sending the control Z, not only does it create a, a signal, but the signal is actually sent to the process group, which means everybody in this process group is going to receive it, right? Because they they're part of a process group. So this is the this is the at the heart of what a shell does when it when it creates a new job. Now. Uh, Herein lies a lot of other uh, other new subtle points. So let's let's wrap up this by taking um, taking some miscellaneous points we need to understand. One of the one of the miscellaneous points, the first miscellaneous point is when we do a kill. When I say kill and I give the the who and the what. Right? So who to send it to and what to send it. So if I give this number, if this number is positive, then it implies the PID of the process to send the signal to. But if this is negative, then it implies the whatever that is, let's call this X, then X 
is the PG ID of the group of the process group to send the signal to. So we kind of repurposed the kill, kill system call so that now we're able to send it to a particular process or a group. If I give a negative number, it goes to the group. If I give a positive number, it goes to the, to the um, uh, if I give a negative number, it goes to the group. If I give a positive number, it goes to the process. Uh, some other miscellaneous things to remember. Um, one of the things to remember is, um, is uh, when, when, a, when a process is put in the background, Right when you when you put a process in the background, um, process in background. Like for example, if I run a command and I put it in the background like this, then shell keeps control of terminal. Um, here's another thing, this one. Uh, let's say I ran, let's say I ran um, uh, uh, on my command prompt. Um, let's say I ran some command and this command is in the background, but now I do an FG. So when I bring it into the foreground, shell yields control to the job that corresponds to the command. I'm saying command, but the command could be just one, one uh, single executable or it could be a pipe with, with several, several processes in it. So that's what that is. Um, the same thing is true if I were to do something like this. If I, let's say, run command, and I didn't put an ampersand, I hit a control. Z. If I don't, don't put an ampersand, at this point, if I don't put an ampersand, then shell yields control. But as soon as I hit a control Z, you get back the command prompt. At this point, shell regains control. I mean, by control, I mean control of terminal. All these control statements are of the terminal. Okay, so this in a nutshell is everything that you need to know about process control.